In this video, we're gonna show how we can go from this to this. Well, good morning. It's time to do a little wood carving this morning. So, I've got this piece of juniper that I've split. I've showed that before. Uh, I use this to split my logs. This is made by Mora Knife. It's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's designed to split wood. Uh, although it does kind of look like a draw knife, it's got a double bevel, which is better for splitting. Single bevel, bevel is better for the actual draw knife. So you basically take a full log, set it, and then you can use another log to kind of start it, pound it through, and you get a nice, clean, even split. So that's what I use to split the wood. Set that aside. And then to get started, I use a good, sharp, small hatchet. This one here is actually kind of a custom setup. A friend of mine set me up with this. This is an old uh, Kelly Flint Edge. This is, I believe, uh, right around the 1900s, and it's been put on a new handle. Hand forged, just really holds a good edge. But any small hatchet will do, as long as it's really sharp. And I usually just kind of visualize what I'm going for. A lot of times you can take a pen or marker and kind of draw out your shape, but I tend to just kind of do it uh, by feel. So I'm going to get started. The big challenge with this piece of wood is we got a little bit of a knot here. So that'll be the handle edge. This will be the spoon bowl part. And uh, we'll maybe start by trying to get rid of that knot there. This wood still is pretty green, meaning it's still fresh, it's still wet, it hasn't been dried. It's preferably the kind of wood I like to work with. It's just much easier to carve uh, and it just overall with the drying process. If I were to let this dry first, I would get a lot of cracks and checks in it. And then when I go to carve the spoon, those cracks are in the spoon. So uh, this way, uh, once you carve the spoon and it dries, there's less wood mass uh, around, so it uh, tends to not crack. So that's the idea behind that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started, start shaving off some of this bark here. When using an ax in this fashion, it's good to choke as far up as possible. I've actually got my thumb on the edge of the head there and um, just use very short strokes, a lot more control. In case you're wondering, this chopping block I use, this is actually, I keep this with me. I travel with this, I carry this around as to always have something to work on. And this little bucket stool I have is the perfect height for that. Works out really good, nice little setup. That way I'm not straining my back or contorting my body so I'm uncomfortable. Of course, with wood carving, you're using sharp tools. There is an inherent danger, but it's all about developing a skill set and learning to work with your tools. Uh, there's a lot of techniques that I'm using that aren't very evident from right off the bat. It may look like I'm just kind of haphazardly swinging away but the reality is I'm using very focused short strokes. Uh, I'm adjusting the angle of this ax head a lot as I'm working with this. Generally I'm keeping a very shallow cut. I'm not going really deep into the wood. It allows for a lot more control. So at this point I'm starting to visualize there's going to be a bowl of the spoon here and then the narrow handle. So what I'll want to do is start uh, chipping away here and to do that, I use kind of a technique. I'm sure there's a, a technical name for it, but I just kind of feather like this, as you can see. I'll bring this in a little bit. You can see I'm kind of feathering that wood out there, and I do that. Those are almost kind of like relief cuts. And then I can flip the wood over and come in from the other side. And then that way, it won't chip away this area that I want to keep. It's one of the things you have to be careful of. One uh, stroke too hard in the wrong direction can remove a bunch of wood that you don't want to remove and uh, that kind of ruins your piece. So same deal, I'm going to kind of gradually chop up, feather that away like that. That way when I come in from the other side, it kind of notches out there. And you can see I'll be flipping it over back and forth quite a bit and already I'm kind of bringing that in there. I'm going to continue with that. See, I'm starting to develop a little bit of shape there. Another technique that works really good too 
As you can see, I'm uh, getting the axe into the wood a little bit and then just pounding through like that. Gives you a little bit more control. And we're working our way towards the spoon blank here. Uh, at this point you can see I've started to develop a little bit of the shape of the spoon here. But at this point it's time to start thinking about uh, the profile as well. Uh, I want to add a little bit of shape to this spoon, meaning the, uh, the bowl of the spoon I want to kind of curve up a little bit. And then I'd like to have a little bit of curve in the handle as well. So having this thickness here is going to allow me to achieve that curve. I can remove uh, wood from the bottom on this side to bring uh, the curve up from the bowl and then I'll remove wood from the top side at the end to bring the curve down this way. So we'll be coming up here and then down there. So to do that I'll just start chipping away behind the bowl. I'm kind of visualizing the bowl ending about right here so that's where I'm going to start bringing it in. I don't want to go too too far in because that will leave that portion of the handle too thin and it could break. So I'm just going to remove a little bit there. You can see there I'm starting to get a little bit of the contour behind the bowl. That's what I'm going for. And on top I'm probably going to bring, you can see that I'm going to bring it down a little bit from the top so we get a little bit of a swoop there. Well, there we are coming along, working on getting that curve like I was talking about there. Bringing that bowl end up. The well, idea is just to slowly work your way through the wood. Try to move too fast and that's where you make your cuts too deep and then you lose the shape that you're going for. So I'm thinking on this one I want to have a nice wide handle end. Bring it in kind of narrow in the center. Then it'll widen back out at the bowl. Well, I think I'm done using the axe at this point, so I'm going to go in with a Sloyd knife. I'll show you what that is. All the tools I'm using except for the axe uh, are on my Amazon store, as well as this leather tool roll. I am trying to do some research on a good small axe that you can find on Amazon. I'm going to order one for myself as to not recommend something I haven't tried. So this is uh, the Beavercraft carving knife. This is relatively inexpensive. It's about $17-$18. I think it's a good beginner's knife. They come very sharp and they hold a sharp edge. And my next go-to tool is going to be the Mora knife. Hook knife. This is the double edge hook knife here. This I also have in my Amazon store. This is a great uh, beginner's starter wood carving knife. Of course, uh, beginning a, a hobby or craft like this, um, you're working with very, very sharp tools. Uh, I will recommend uh, starting out with Kevlar gloves. They make a Kevlar cut glove and those gloves will protect you from slicing but not uh, the stabbing. So um, I'll leave, I'll put some of those in my Amazon store as well. There are a lot of different Sloyd type knives uh, on the market. More knife makes a lot of nice ones too. I typically try to go with one that's no longer than two and a half inches for the blade. If it's too long it can get in the way. This is a good size. You can do most of your carving uh, holding just the wooden handle and then a lot of cuts you'll want to choke up on the blade as well. Use your thumb to brace yourself there. And that way you can get some really precision carving with the tip, the rounded tip of the blade there. So as you can see this is very rough from uh, hacking at it with my axe. I'm going to start in by just smoothing out all the surfaces and really uh, looking at the shape and contour that I want to have. So one of the most common cuts and most useful cuts that I use is called the push cut. It's when I'm gripping the knife with I'm left handed. If you're right handed you'll be gripping with your right hand. But uh, you hold with your primary hand a nice tight grip on the knife and then you could use your opposing hand to either push on the blade or push on the wood part of the handle. That's the name of push cut. It gives you a lot of control. And you're always being sure to cut into a direction where your hand is not resting. So I'm making sure that my hand is holding the wood here and I'm doing a push cut away from those fingers. 
I'll slowly just start removing wood here. Again, this is one of the reasons why I use green wood. It's a lot easier to do this uh, bulk removal of the wood. This push cut allows you to do kind of a shaving motion. You can really just work it, get those curls, and then you can come in from the opposite direction to get those curls out of the way. Just kind of keep doing that back and forth. You can use your uh, chopping block or your body to brace the spoon. A lot of times I'll put the spoon into my chest to get some bracing there, but for now I'm going to be using the block. In my chopping block here I've made an indentation which I can use to kind of catch catch the wood there. Allows me to use a lot more force without the wood slipping. Got a knot here that's going to give me a little bit of trouble. I'll just slowly shave away at it. I found uh, that most of my cuts and nicks on my hands are not from actually my carving strokes, but from maneuvering the wood and changing positions. I tend to uh, not focus as much when I do that, so I really try to be mindful of when I'm moving around. Uh, a lot of times when I'm switching direction with the wood, I'm just careless and I'll, I'll poke or nick myself. That tends to be uh, how I usually end up cutting myself. So I try to really focus on that as to not cut myself any further. I already have one little nick on my fingertip there. Just slightly nicked it with the axe when I was changing positions. Alright, so this is the progress we've made. You can see I got quite a bit of the shape going here, bringing in the uh, narrow neck. Shaped the bowl out pretty good. That's about the shape I'm going for. You can see the profile. I've got that curve that I was going for. So at this point, I think I'm ready to go in with the uh, hook knife. Although I do really like the double edge Mora knife, uh, you can do a pull and a push cut with having an edge on both sides. But I also use a single edge. This is a left-handed single edge, meaning the, the cutting edge is just on one side, so it's made for doing pull cuts with the left hand, because I'm left-handed. Uh, Mora knife does make a single edge as well. I happen to have, this is made by a company, I believe it's Backwoods. These are a little harder to come by. So that's what I'm going to start with. Just going to start removing a little bit of that wood. Now, a lot of people say, oh, you never pull the knife towards you. Uh, in wood carving, this is an actual technique. It's the uh, pull cut. And this, this is actually a very safe cut if you do it properly. And the way I'm doing it is I'm holding the wood with my thumb below the edge of the wood. That way when I do the pull, if I were to overshoot, my thumb is below there and it's not going to catch my thumb. And same deal with having this thumb in here holding the wood, I'm going to make sure that it's out of the way. And you can do a test pull and you can see physically my, my knife is not able to reach as far as that thumb is. I just don't have the extension. So that, that right there is a very safe cut as long as you don't move this thumb up. I'm also kind of cutting against the grain at a little bit of a diagonal cut. That way the blade is going away from my thumb there. So I'm going to start by just removing a lot of the bulk in the bowl. In the center, you can see I just slipped over, but because my thumb is below there, I'm not going to cut myself. Once I get some of the bulk removed in the center of the bowl, I'm going to start going and defining an edge around the rim of the bowl there. And to do that, I'm going to very, very carefully place the knife where I want that edge to be and then make my cuts in. And just go around the whole outside of the bowl like that. I like to define the inside edge first and then I can come around with my carving knife and bring the outside edge even to that inside edge that I defined. So I'll slowly work away at that.
Well, I had to move into the shade. I was getting a little bit too much sun there. I don't want to risk getting sunburn. Well, this is where we're at with the spoon. It is coming right along. Developed a nice shape to it. I am getting very close to the point of actually being done. Uh, so I'll be using a little bit of sandpaper to smooth out the rough edges. <clears throat> Spent about the first half of the day working on this spoon. So really, realistically, from start to total finish, you know, probably takes me about four hours, maybe five hours to fully complete. But I've never really timed it completely because I take breaks and I just kind of you know, average the time. It's really not a big concern to me. I actually really enjoy doing this. And uh, one of the things I like about it the most is I do lose track of time. Like I had to take my lunch break. I had no idea it was already two in the afternoon. The only thing that let me know was my stomach started growling. And uh, that's a good indicator that I'm doing something that I really enjoy when I completely lose track of time and I have trouble breaking away from it. Um, it's hard for me to put the spoon down once I get started. I just kind of want to complete it. And that's something that's, uh, like I said, a good indicator that I found something that I really enjoy doing. So at this point, when it gets down this close, uh, I'm basically just trying to smooth out most of my cut marks so they're not super deep and defined. So to do that, I just kind of do a light shaving with the push cut. Just kind of push back and or let the knife go back and forth using a pushing motion. And like I said, I'm just very kind of grazing the surface of the wood. That way it's just hitting the high spots. If I use too much pressure, it's going to want to dig into the low spots as well. And then I have to start all over with evening it out, evening it out. So at this point, like I said, I'm just very lightly shaving the high spots off. This is actually a very enjoyable part of the process because, of course, you're using less physical force and you're really starting to see the final product. So it's, uh, it's the reward for me, putting in the efforts. And then with this spoon, I kind of learned a lot about shaping. Typically, I use a very, like on this handle part, I would just have it come straight and flat. And what I tried to experiment with, you might not be able to see it, is actually curving the edges on the top and bottom. So it's thicker in the center and thinner on these edges here. It's little things like that that really give it a personal touch. If you just go straight lines and straight edges everywhere, that's, it, you know, that's something that a machine could do. So I find that using the curves and all that gives it a very, it's very evident that it was hand carved and that's what I'm going for. wind has really picked up here. Apologize, I'm a little stuffed up. I do, I don't have a real problem with allergies, but when it's windy, especially out in the deserts of Arizona, I tend to get kind of stuffed up easy. Not sick, just uh, just kind of an allergy type thing. This, as you can see, is a pretty good sized spoon. This really isn't an eating spoon. This is more of a cooking, mixing spoon. Kitchen utensil. And I'm happy with the grain patterns in it. I like the knots. I think that's going to add a really neat look to it. So what I might do now is go in with some pretty rough sandpaper to get rid of a lot of these uh, rough tear outs. And then I might have to go in and still use the knife a little bit. This is a pretty rough grit right here. This is 60 grit. You gotta be careful with this because it, yes, it will smooth out a lot of the rough spots, but it's gonna leave some pretty deep scrape marks that will need to be sanded out with a finer sandpaper. So actually, ideally, I should probably go with like an 80 or 100 grit, but I just don't happen to have any of that on hand. So we'll use this. You can see I'm using an apron because I am in the doorway of my van. I don't want shavings and sawdust all in front of the van, so I'll track it in. 
Aprons are great because you can just catch everything in the apron and then you can stand up, fold it up, move somewhere uh, away from your area and dump it out. That's why I like using an apron. A lot of times you can just use your chest or your body to brace up against. All right, so I got to the final sanding stage uh, with a 220 grit sandpaper, which smooths it out pretty well. And then as you can see, the color is a lot deeper. That's because I soaked it with water. Before your final sanding, it's good to soak it with water and that'll kind of raise all the grain. And then when you give it one more sand, it really smooths it out. So I'm gonna actually wet this down one more time. Well, you don't necessarily wanna sand it when it's soaking wet, but if it's good and damp, You'll see this wood right here, this is gonna, it definitely deepens the color, but that'll whiten up and dry up pretty quick. So I'm just gonna let it dry just a quick second. The grain has already raised from being wet down like that. And then I'll go in with a nice piece of that 220 grit and just give it a final sanding. This thing, I am so happy with it. The grain pattern, color, when this is soaked with oil, it is gonna look beautiful very happy with this one see it's starting to whiten up already sand it when it's soaking wet it'll just kind of clog up your sandpaper so I think that's dried enough I'm gonna grab a fresh piece and give it one final sand Well, this is our finished product. I am very pleased with this spoon. I think it turned out very well. I really like the shape and design. Nice contours there. really like how this is shaped here. So this is going to have to dry for a couple weeks, and then we'll give it a walnut oil bath, and it'll be ready for use. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. I did forget to mention one of my favorite books. This is Swedish Carving Techniques. This is a great book. There's a ton of information in this. I left this in my Amazon store as well. Also, there's a really good book called Spoon. I put that in the Amazon store. I downloaded that book in digital format, although there is a paper format uh, available as well. Also, I did not cover uh, sharpening knives, which is very important in this craft. I'm thinking of doing a video on that soon. That's a whole video in itself. Also, there is a ton of information on YouTube already about sharpening knives, so if you're interested, you can check that out. Uh, thanks again for watching, everyone. I hope you found it uh, informational and useful, and we'll see you very soon in the next video. Take care. Peace.